So unless you've been living under a rock for the past few months, you've probably heard about AI-generated art. The concept is pretty simple, although the technology is very complex. It's basically an artificial intelligence that creates art based on human input, and that art is, of course, scrambled together from millions or billions of art pieces from across the world. So it can create some really funky, weird, and very unique art, but it can also create some really, really awesome fantasy art. And in this video, I just want to show how we can use an AI generator to come up with a really brilliant art piece and use that art piece to create a new and original monster for 5e Dungeons and Dragons. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the AI art generator. In this case, I'm using stable diffusion so the prompt that we're going to try out is a fantasy monster let's say maybe a warrior knoll because knolls are pretty cool it has demonic dark skin spikes and claws we want a fantasy mad painting we want some dnd monster concept art and then there's a bunch of other prompt style things you can put in there so maybe let's say cinematic uh, highly detailed perfect art and while we're waiting for the ai to turn out some cool monster art i want to quickly tell you about unimaginable monsters which is our newest publication over on the dm's guild and it is a monster companion with monsters imagined and illustrated by artificial intelligence and that's why they're unimaginable, because they're really some concept that we would have never been able to come up with on our own. And the process we've gone through for making these monsters is a lot like I'll do in this video. So if you want some new monsters for your 5e campaign, go ahead and check out Unimaginable Monsters, which you can find a link to in the description down below. And it's over on the dmsguild.com. All right, so here's a look at the monsters that we've generated. And I'm just going to blow these up so you can see what we're looking at. This guy, it's pretty generic, not too impressive, I think. This one is uh, delighted, delightfully weird with an owlbear or something growing out of the shoulder. That's the really fun part about these AI generated art pieces. Meh, meh. Pretty demonic. Three arms. That's something. Uh, this is more like a sort of yeti kind of feel for Noel, but does have a claws, a, a complete mouth on his arm, which is again pretty cool. It's a, it's a pretty weird concept that you'd have a hard time coming up with on your own. This one is also pretty fun, although a bit messy. This one looks also fun. This one I kind of like for a human warrior, maybe more than a gnoll, because you have this weird face thing going on, but it looks like a gladiator or something in a really weird mask. This one also looks quite weird uh, in not the worst way, I'd say. I like this one as well. Kind of the one that looks most like a gnoll so far. I'd say with the posture as well. So that's pretty nice. And now we get to the really fun stuff. This one looks awesome, I think. I like the huge ears and the tentacle covered body. Uh, this could be a really, really weird psionic gnoll shaman. This one is also pretty weird, maybe uh, too weird for our purposes. This one also looks fun. It seems to uh, have a bit of weirdness going on with the arm over here. And then we have this one, which I also really like. It just looks very very weird but i think that the last one we actually got is my favorite there's some cool stuff going on in the background and then we have this absolutely horrendous looking weird weird maybe it's not a knoll but it's something and it's a really weird and exciting monster so i think i'm gonna go with that and we are gonna figure out exactly what it does and what it is for a monster right now all right so what i've done here is that i've brought the Null image over to InDesign and I've set up a little stat block thingy for it here. And this is just based on the Null Fang of Yenogo, which we get in the monster manual. And then we'll go in and upgrade it to become a true Null Mindhunter. As you can see, I've already made the Null an aberration because I think that just fits with this insane uh, appearance that it has. And then we're going to go down and see how else we can improve it. First off, the highest challenge rating null we get in the monster manual and in every other publication is a challenge rating 4. And I think that's not very interesting, not counting a specific null that is present in Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frostmaiden, I should say. Uh, so I think that we're going to make this null a challenge rating 7 null, which means that is is 2300 XP and it also has a proficient bonus of 3. Now we also want this null to have some skills and we want it to have perception plus three let's first actually go ahead and look at its stats i think it should have a higher strength score 
if we're going to make it that much more dangerous. 15 dex sounds about right. Let's do 16 con. Let's do 18 intelligence. 12 wisdom and 13 charisma seems fine. We're also going to beef up its hit points. And we do that by setting up to 15d8 plus 45, which makes for 67, 112 hit points. And we're going to bring that armor class up to 16. And we're just going to call that natural armor. So now we've got a chassis that is a bit better for a challenge rating 7. We're also going to put con proficiency up to 16. We're going to have wisdom at 4. We're going to pop in int at 7. And we're also going to have charisma at plus 4. That means we also have perception at plus 4. And we will do inside plus 4. And I think that is probably fine for the Noel Mind Hunter. Uh, dark vision is always good to have, and I think that this creature shouldn't probably have mind sight, but we do want it to have telepathy, 16 feet, so it can scare your players from a distance. Now, the original Noel Fang of Yenugu has this rampage feature, which is kind of cool. Uh, when it reduces creature's zero hit points with immediate attack in its turn, it can take a bonus action to move up to half speed and make a bite attack. Instead, we're going to call it Psychic Exaltation, and we say when the Nolde reduces creatures to zero hit points with a melee attack on its turn. All right, so sorry for the disturbance here. We had some issues with the camera, apparently. Uh, I'm just going to continue. The Psychic Exaltation feature is just going to be when it reduces the creature's zero hit points, and the Nolde exudes Psychic Energy in a 30-foot radius. Each creature in the area must make a DC 15 intelligence saving throw, taking, let's do 48 psychic damage on a fail save and half as much on a success. A creature that fails this save is stunned until the end of the Knoll's next turn. So here we have a feature that is really powerful. It could also end up harming its own allies, but I think I sort of envisioned the Knoll Mindhunter as a, some, a creature that could really work alone a lot of the time, and also a creature that wouldn't really care if it ends up stunning its own allies. So, um, so yeah, pretty interesting feature, and I think that'll be fun in play. Getting down to its actions, we have a multi-attack, three actions, three attacks, one with his bite and two with his claws. And as written, the Noel Mindhunter now has a plus seven to hit. It deals seven piercing damage. And I think we'll do a wisdom saving throw. The target must succeed on a DC 15 wisdom saving throw or be frightened of the Noel until the end of the Knoll's next turn. And we have these claws that also need to be plus seven to hit, and they deal eight damage now. I'm just gonna reword this. If the target is a creature, it is, it must. And we're gonna do this plus um, if the target is a creature that is frightened, it takes an additional nine to the eight psychic damage. So basically the node wanna get creatures frightened so we can deal more damage to it. Even with this, I think that the bite damage is sort of low. So we're just gonna put that up to 11. And we're gonna take the claws, let's say 15. I think that's pretty decent. So if, the, if it gets them frightened, it gonna it's gonna have that really amazing effect right there. So we do want some more stuff that can get the characters frightened because just having one option to do it isn't really enough, I think. So we wanna do a bit more with that. Let's say Intrude Thoughts could be a bonus action and Intrude Thoughts is the Null uh, 
plains horrific images in the mind of a creature it can see within 30 feet of it. The creature must succeed on a DC 15 intelligence saving throw or be frightened. So at the start of each turn while frightened its way, the creature takes nine psychic damage and it can repeat this saving throw at the end of each turn, ending the effect on itself on a success. So basically it just plants some fear in a creature's mind, which of course makes it more susceptible to its claw attacks and also of course have the added value of making them frightened. So I think that's a pretty cool little effect. So we're also going to give the knoll a psychic rush. This basically allows it to move up to its speed in a straight line and not provoke opportunity attacks, stuff like that. And when it moves through a creature's space, that creature must make a dexterity saving throw or take some damage. So it's both a mobility bonus action, but also something that the knoll can use to deal damage, which I think makes it a lot of fun. Now, what we also want on the knoll, of course, seeing, seeing that it is a psionic creature, is some spell casting. So I'm just going to write that out. So the spells that we've given it here is detect thoughts, invisibility, and then dominate monster and telekinesis. I think where we can do a command as a spammable action. I think that's pretty fun. And we could also go in and maybe give it, let's say, crown of madness. I think that's also decent fun. I don't think it needs to detect thoughts. It's not really that sort of creature. It's more of a hunter. Uh, so I think with these abilities, it's going to be pretty fun. I think the note should also have an AoE of sorts. So let's giving, give it a disruptive blast, which recharges five to six. And we're going to say the Noel um, creates a blast of psychic energy in a 60 foot cone each creature in the area must succeed on a dc 15 intelligence saving throw or i was about to make this an intelligence saving throw but we already have a few intelligence saving throws on there so why not make it a charisma saving throw or <coughs> And we're just going to reword this, must make a DC 15 charisma saving throw, taking 68, so that's let's do 68, which is 27, psychic damage on a fail save, and half as much on a success, full one, and uh, we're also going to fix that up here. A creature that fails this save also loses its proficiency bonus until the end of the knoll's next turn. So this is a really fun feature that I love putting on monsters now that proficiency bonuses are really becoming even more important. So taking away a creature's proficiency bonus for a round is not only going to hurt, of course, its saving throws, its attack rolls, its spell save DCs, Basically everything it's got, it's also going to make it so that some features it can use based on proficiency bonus is not going to be usable until the end of its next turn. So I think that really, really makes for an interesting and new uh, sort of mechanic or dynamic that uh, we can use to make a creature such as this Noel Mindhunter more frightening. The last thing I want to do is I want to make sure that we're going to get some spellcasting use. So we are also going to say that the Noel can use spell casting in place of its bite attack and we are also gonna update this wording so it fits the new wording make one bite attack and two claw attacks the node can use spell casting in place of its bite we're just gonna say so we get that line over here and I think that pretty much makes for a decent monster right here. The Knoll Mindhunter is a medium aberration Knoll. I think maybe if there's one thing wrong with this at present, it is probably that it has a bit too high AC and maybe we're going to take the hit points down just a notch. So that brings it down to 105. And I think that's probably more appropriate for a Chandring 7 monster. Uh, yes, I think this monster is pretty fun. It's going to have some abilities that are going to disrupt the players obviously it's going to have some spells that can be interesting command crown of madness invisibility that's always fun dominate monster telekinesis is of course very useful and then it has some 
bonus actions that allows it some mobility and also to just get in its enemy's head. I think this is a monster that would be very fun to play and is good at that challenge rating 7 spot. And all of this comes from the simple image if we have here. So yeah, if you want more monsters like this, check out Unimaginable Monsters on the DMs Guild. It's live right now. And you can, of course, also check out our Patreon. It will be in the description, patreon.com, where we put out monsters such as this one and full encounters and all that good stuff. And you get to also vote on which videos we will be making. So yeah, beyond that, there's not a whole lot left to say, except thank you so much for watching. And I hope that I'll see you in the next video.